Reviving Malaysia and followers from around the world. Our guest tonight is Peter Ong, my friend, not just a guest. He's a man of many talents. He's an actor and a singer, but not many people are aware that he's also a very good photographer. He takes pictures of birds, the feather kind, okay? And monkeys. So we're gonna, as they say, let's monkey around, okay? Uh, and not many people are also aware that he has a master's in law. Wow, from a UK news day. He was a banker, uh, another surprise, right? And an advertising man, another surprise. But more importantly, he's an animal lover like me. He's a naturalist. So please welcome the one only Peter. Oh, yay! Hi, Chun Wai. Good evening. So good to see you. I think yes. it's, I haven't seen you since like MCO part one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for uh, joining us uh, tonight. I'm sure that um, many of your fans, uh, followers uh, would like to hear about what you have been doing, okay? Uh, not on stage. <laughs> and for me, I'm really curious, okay? So that's why uh, I want you to share with us as to um, why you have uh, dived into photography in a very big way. Uh, you have taken so many great pictures, okay? I know you have been uh, selling good pictures, okay? <laughs> now, but, but before we do that, uh, as a background, um, perhaps you can share with us. I uh, understand that uh, as a child, uh, you really uh, love animals, still love animals, okay? And your house was like a zoo. You were literally a zookeeper. Please share with us. <laughs> Yeah, I think I was the child from hell for my parents. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've, I, as far back as I can remember, I've always loved animals. Um, my parents weren't really animal lovers to begin with, mm -hmm. you know, and of course, like children's books, you know, you read yeah. all about having a dog or having a cat. And I was like, why do these kids have dogs and cats? And I don't. <laughs> so then I was like, okay, never mind. So like, you know, like longkang drains, you know, go and take the fish, la, take yeah, the tadpole, yeah. bring home. Cause so cute, right? So colorful. Yes. And um, one time I actually went with my parents to uh, one of their friends' orchards and unbeknownst to them, I kidnapped a chick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> kidnapped a chick, brought it home. And of course, okay. being so young, I think it was in primary school, I fell asleep in the car. So, but you know, and I got carried up to my room. And then in the okay. morning I woke up, I was like, oh, my chick, it's still in the car. And then <laughs> I went down and then it was still alive, but it had okay. crapped all over the inside of the car. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah, my mom was not happy. Um, but yeah, so I've, I've always loved animals. And even now I have three dogs at home. So um, I cannot imagine a day in my life without having an animal around. So yeah. So your parents did not allow you to keep a cat or a dog. Was it because they, they, they felt that it was a difficult job to keep the pets? I think it was a generational thing. You know, mm -hmm. they, they, I think for them, animals and nature were always considered dirty, mm -hmm. should be outside the house. Okay. Um, you know, uh, humans are clean. Humans should maintain, you know, their cleanliness and, and their order. Um, you know, but I, for me, I was always like, well, you know, we, man is part of the animal kingdom. We are not... Yeah apart from it we can't live without nature you know and, and and there was always an innate curiosity as well as like how how is it that some people can have such a, a wonderful connection with something that's not even human that's mm -hmm. different from you in every single way so that always fascinated me as well so the uh the goldfish okay this is from my research huh? the goldfish the terrapin and your 20 hamsters okay and white yeah. mice were supposed to be the compromise yes that's right so basically, I, so they were like, no dog, no cat, you know, because the tea. So I would like go to my school canteen mm. and rescue the hamsters there. I buy <laughs> the hamsters, like, you okay. know, like literally it was like two ringgit, two ringgit. They yeah. were supposed to end up as biology experiment, oh. like, you know, in those days. Yeah. So I buy the hamsters and before I knew it, the hamsters re reproduced as they do. White mice also reproduced. Well, one white mouse, I remember, uh, escaped <laughs> and, and gave birth on my living room sofa, <laughs> much to my mom's dismay. Um, okay. Yeah, so I and and I, and I and my fish and my terrapins I would keep in my bedroom because you oh. know they yeah they didn't want it in the house. I said then that's fine. They can all sleep with me in my room. <laughs> wow, <laughs> it was a very smelly room. <laughs> okay, um, Peter. So uh, how did this uh, what do you call it? How did you start your photography uh, project, taking pictures of uh, monkeys and birds? 
so with uh, with regards to taking pictures of monkeys, it all started actually with Jane. I've always loved okay. photography anyway. Um, I, uh, I would, you know, always have a camera around. I remember in my university days, I, a camera, I always had a, a camera, you know, and unfortunately in those okay. days, you know, uh, everything was on film. So everything's a bit yeah. grainy, not quite HD as they are now, you know, but um, I always had a camera and um, it was something that I, 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 I've always had an interest in. So when Jane came down for a second visit in 2017, mm -hmm. um, you know, she asked me uh, a, a question. She's like, you know, so how are Malaysia's primates doing? And I was like, mm. I don't know, but you know, Malaysia is very connected to the internet. We have Google, we get everything. I can find that for you in two seconds. So ta 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 ta. It's like, okay, nothing's coming out. Ta 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 ta. And that really got to me. You know, we didn't even have anything about how many species of primates exist in Malaysia. Mm. So I was very perplexed. I was like, this. This is really weird. We are like, you know, 2017, yeah. you know, and yeah. that those days going towards Wawasan 2020 can mm -hmm. flying cars and all. So it's like, okay, we're aiming for flying cars and we don't even know what's in our jungle. Yeah. How can that be? So I got in touch with uh, the researchers asking questions. Um, and then I got to know that, you know, that there are 25 species of primates in Malaysia. In fact, we are only second in Asia after Indonesia. So that's really incredible given, given how small our land size is in relation. Um, and also, I, uh, one of the problems that I found out was that we have very little documentation and research done on our primates. Not just our primates, actually a lot of our plant species, our wildlife species, very little documentation. Some species of primates in Malaysia until today are considered data deficient, meaning not a single paper written, not a single piece of research oh, okay. done. And it's 2021. <laughs> so it's like, I was like, so I asked the researchers, you know, I'm not a mm. biology grad. I, yeah. I don't know how else I can contribute apart from, you know, raising funds yeah. for you, helping you and all that. So they were like, well, if, if you like photography, maybe you can consider just taking photos and mm. submitting them to us for, for use in research. I was like, hell yeah, that I can do, you know, how difficult mm. can it be? But of course it, yeah, it's a lot more difficult than it looks like. <laughs> Cause so, it's so hard to find them. <laughs> so Peter, out of this 25, yes. okay. Uh, how many of them have you covered? So I've already covered 15. Okay. Okay. So um, now it's down to the final 10. Uh, a lot of them are based in Sabah and Sarawak. And again, they are data deficient. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them, we're not, we're not even sure if they have uh, become extinct because there's been no more reported sightings. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So it's literally, I have got to get in touch with uh, now, you know, Orang Asli people who live in the jungles. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, I've been to Sabah many times looking for a, a, a monkey that, you know, I've, I've yet to find. Um, so it's it's been very, very challenging. But uh, apart from the challenges, I've really gotten to know Malaysia mm -hmm. so much better than I... The, and it's, every trip always turns out something that I didn't know about my own mm -hmm. country. So I'm really, really grateful to have embarked on this journey. And, and I wish that, you know, uh, more Malaysians could see and enjoy uh, the side of Malaysia that I'm discovering all the time. So, uh, Peter, what was the easy part and the difficult parts in carrying out your project? Okay, so the easy part, I guess, for me would, would be the rediscovery and the reaffirmation of how helpful and friendly Malaysians are because, you know, I would have to make phone calls to st okay. total strangers like, uh, hi, you don't know me, tapi I dapat nombor you dari siapa, 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 siapa. And then they're like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm like, uh, uh, pernah tak tengok uh, uh, monyet ni? Uh, then they're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Semalam ada jumpa di sini lah, hutan ni, hutan tu. So they're actually very forthcoming. Malaysians are so helpful and so generous, right? So I think that that has made life so much easier. Mm -hmm. The the tough part really is is looking for these primates because a yeah. lot of them are very shy uh, yeah. and a lot of them don't want to be seen, don't want to be found. And oh. of course, our jungles are, are, <laughs> are not easy to maneuver, yeah. Yeah. especially if you have a big ass camera mm. and equipment and you're hiking and, and bringing your supplies and your, your mm. hammock and everything else. It's, it's a challenge, but it's a very rewarding challenge because again, you get to see sunrises and sunsets from the top of mountain peaks that no one else has ever seen you get to discover weird mushrooms weird plants that i'm like oh my god so many things mm. weird wild orchids that we never even knew existed so yeah it's been really rewarding despite the challenges where were these locations 
So I've been to the, the northernmost part of Peninsular Malaysia, which is Wang Kalian, the last village before the border of Thailand, mm -hmm. went inside the jungle. Of course, Wang Kalian has been notorious uh, in recent years due to the, the mass, mass graves that were dug yeah. up. Um, but they are also home to a wonderful species of primate called the stump-tailed macaque, mm -hmm. which only exists in Perlis. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So they are actually a uh, Himalayan species, they're northern species. They stretch from the Himalayas all the way down to the Isthmus of Kra, mm -hmm. uh, you know. But uh, there's somehow this isolated population only found in Perlis. And we, we asked the people uh, across the, the Thai border, you know, have you seen these monkeys before? And they're like, no, tak pernah, you know, never oh. seen them before. So they, that means they only roam around Wang Kalian. Okay. So that was a very interesting uh, 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 thing to note. And now there's uh, the first study is being conducted like, starting in 2019 <laughs> the first ever study and i'm like you know so many things we need to to yeah. keep doing and keep learning keep discovering i've been to um the furthest uh, one of the furthest most remote villages in sabah uh, long pasia which is yes. an eight hour ride from kk you know four hours to sipitang and then another four hours off road um like near the kalimantan border <laughs> up in the highlands and it was incredible we were looking for this hoses langer uh, we went trekking through the jungle for days um, we didn't find it but we found um bornean gibbons which were really nice to see and it was nice to see a uh, pristine primary rainforest so and of course uh the central forest spine went to taman negara went to langkawi looking for dusky langers penang looking for dusky langers been everywhere like and i still need to go back to sarawak to uh to the highlands to look for other monkeys as well i've been to bako national park as well to see what's there so it's it's been a really wonderful uh, experience these few years so each time the, when you go into the jungle uh, how many days do you spend oh it varies <laughs> if if I, if I know that the the primate is going to be shy then i've got to prepare for at least three to three days at least to sometimes a week and a bit um if, if I know the, the species is not so shy, like the dusky langers, then I won't have to trek yeah. very far in. I won't have to spend any nights. I just need to trek in a little bit and, you know, spend the day with them. So each time you are accompanied by guides or orang asli? Oh, yes. Either a researcher, if there is a researcher, mm. um, then all my photos I will happily give to the researcher as well. Because it's very hard work that they do. You know, we follow the, like when I followed the orang utan researchers, we start off at four in the morning. We leave our mm. camp. We walk to the base of the tree where the orangutan is asleep. We wait for her to wake up and come down. That's about roughly 6, 6.30 a.m. Then we spend the whole day following her, you know, and the researcher needs yeah. to note like her, where she goes, uh, how many trees she climbs, what type of tree she climbs, what she eats, how often does she drink, what type of fruit is she eating, how many times has she defecated. Um, finally, bef until she like makes her own nest to go to sleep, that's like, at, again, at six something. And then we track back by the time we reach camp, it's like eight, you know, so, and. And so I just bring my camera and take take photos while the researchers are busy researching and observing. So it's it's a it's a very interesting process that I've that I've learned to that that they do. And of course the orang asli when yeah. there are no researchers, then I engage the orang asli and just walk in. And they tell me about you know oh you know when they're young they used to walk this path. These are the things they used to harvest to eat. This wow. this is a, a species of rattan vine that is now like nearly wow. wiped out. You know and like so many things they have. They have such a huge wealth of information that no one has really actually bothered to tap and to document. So yeah. I think that's something we really need to look into. Mm. Mm. So so Peter, although you talked about how uh, this Orasli uh, told you about what life was like then. Of course, uh, many of this is because that uh, uh, much of the uh, forest is gone. There's been urbanization, you know, now. Um, mm. Obviously, come to the question of uh, these uh, primates. A lot of them have uh, lost their land, okay? Uh, you know, but uh, many of us who live near the fringes of uh, the uh, jungle, okay? Uh, we know that they come to our homes, you know, they raid our kitchens, you know, they, they steal our foods and then they rummage through the rubbish bin. Most of us get very upset because they become pets, okay? Um, um, I read somewhere too that even their eating habits have changed, okay? There's this, uh, you know, Malaysia has become, a, a what do you call it, a palm oil plantations all over. It says that the uh, pigtail uh, makeup, okay, which used to eat insects and leaves, uh, has now started eating rats, okay, at uh, palm oil plantations. Well, it is good and bad, okay? I mean, suddenly the appetite has changed. Of course, they also uh, are involved now in the ecosystem. I just want to share with you, okay, um, 
I, I I'm caught in this situation where, like many people, I live I live near the um, the finches of the uh, forest. Okay, uh, many of my neighbors are very upset with the monkeys. Okay, uh, sometimes I go a bit crazy. I said maybe I should just put some uh, bread there, you know, uh, put some banana there. Then they say no, 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 John White, please, please don't do that. Okay, you're gonna encourage them to come. Okay, but uh, you know, uh, like you and I, we beloved animals. Okay, there's this little uh, voice in our heart that says. Look, they need they need to be to be fed. Do you think they want to come to your kitchen to steal the stuff, the horrible stuff that you eat? Okay. Now, now, what is your view on this kind of intrusion? Well, yes, like you've uh, correctly mentioned, their homes are being destroyed. In fact, the central forest spine, which is very very vital to Malaysia, it runs all the way from the north to the south. You know, and and it provides eighty percent of peninsular Malaysia's water supply. Um, that unfortunately has it's no longer one single stretch it's actually broken up now into four fragments mm. so there's a lot of work trying to uh, join back these fragments because it's not just for our water supply but it's also for our wildlife like our tigers you know like there uh, there was a I read recently a news report that there are only 23 tigers left in the balum Mungo forest reserve area and that's very worrying because with inbreeding and without the ability to find another mate, I mean, it's as yeah. good as extinct. Yeah. So we need to find a way to, to bridge these fragments so that our wildlife can also cross from one place, from one, you know, fragment to another safely without be being roadkill. Mm -hmm. Like there's been so many cases recently of tapirs becoming roadkill, yes. elephants becoming roadkill. Uh, countless monkeys become roadkill, you know, porcupines become roadkill. So it's, it's a big problem when we just decide to build a road through or build a housing area through or an industrial area through without thinking about the consequences. And that's uh, also what has happened with uh, the long-tailed macaques that frequently come out. Mm -hmm. Now, this species of macaque, um, they're actually fringe dwellers. So they're not really deep forest dwellers. They, they've, yeah. They're the only species of primate that live on the fringe with us. So they're not scared of us like the yeah. other primates are. And of course, over the years, a lot of them have been fed food because we yeah. love them, right? And we think it's a, it's a great thing to do. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> what I have found out, because I used to do to feed them as well when I was younger, um, yeah. what I found out uh, from the research is that it's actually encouraged them to become very dependent on humans. And that's why they become so brave as to break in. Mm. Now, when you, when you um, come across these long-tailed macaques in other parts of the jungles, they're actually not so brave. You know, they keep a very yeah. respectful distance because they are very content just living on the food that they find in the forest. And nature does provide for them. They love the, the figs. They love um, mm. uh, leaves, bark. They eat everything, you know, and insects as well. But it's just because that we've been feeding them for so long, they've developed uh, an addiction really to the sugar and salt in our food. Mm. So that has actually caused them, and like all addictions, the minute you suddenly cut it off, they become very, very aggressive. Yeah. So it's actually a, a re-education process. We have to relearn that actually by not feeding them, we are actually being very kind to them because we are encouraging them back to the jungle and mm. encouraging, to, encouraging them to rediscover their natural food source. You know, the only reason why they come into, I mean, I've lived in um, campsites in the jungle and there were long-tailed macaques there as well and they didn't even touch my supplies. Oh. You know, they were so scared mm. and and they, they were not familiar with what my bread tasted like, okay. you know, so it's very different from um, uh, uh, the macaques who have grown up generations living next to people, um, living next to housing areas who have always been fed. So that is, is, is a big problem that we have to deal with. Uh, Peter, uh, I saw one of your pictures. Uh, where you took of a monkey, I can't remember the name. I think it starts with, uh, with an S. Okay, about how you mentioned that look, they, they live really like a family. Uh, the, the the father will really take care of the the, the child. Uh, what what was what was the name of the monkey? The Siamang. Ah yes yes yes. <laughs> where was this picture taken? So this uh, the Siamangs are the largest gibbon species in the world, and we are very fortunate that they can be found in peninsular Malaysia, and they're actually mountain forest dwellers. So they're all up in the mountains. Actually, if you drive on the way up to Gentings, you can see them by the roadside. It's just that people don't really pay attention to the. They've never mm -hmm. even noticed their existence, okay. um, and they live like you said correctly in family mm -hmm. units: mummy, daddy, older mm -hmm. sibling, and a baby. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of our gibbon species they're endangered not just because of uh, deforestation but also because of the illegal wildlife pet trade mm. which Malaysia is, is, is a hub for. Um, so in order to get your cute baby monkey a lot of times you have to wipe out the mummy and the daddy and 
or more often, sadly, the older sibling as well. Because oh. like us, you imagine if someone comes to your family unit and tries to take the youngest from you, you're not going to give it away without a fight. Yeah. And usually a fight to the very death. So, and it's very, very unfortunate because a lot of these young gibbons um, also never live till adulthood. They keep getting fed wrong food. Mm. Um, you know, and they, they keep, they, people think, oh, yeah. they're like us, you know, so we yeah. give them apple, orange, uh, bread, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Oh my God. Yeah, you know, so and, and they don't survive. And I've seen cases of, you know, people bringing their, their dying uh, leaf monkeys, dying gibbons to vets, you know, save them. It's too late. Yeah. They're dying from poisoning, you know, literally. I mean, yeah. they're like, but we just give them apples, but apples don't grow in Malaysia. These, you know, it's it's not yeah. in their natural diet. So yeah. a lot of times we fall in love with what we think is a very cute animal, but we don't realize that it's very, very hard to to keep them alive artificially. You know, their best, if you love them, really love them, they're best left with their families. Peter, you mentioned about the uh, dusty uh, langua. Okay. Yes. Uh, what is their status? Because, um, you know, I, I went jogging recently with, in uh, Botanical Gardens in Penang. Yes. I, I, I spotted uh, a few of them. Yes. Uh, in other places, I've seen them too. Um, what is their status? Are they near extinct or are they still easily uh, traceable? So they have uh, uh, actually become endangered, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, uh, it's They are one of the, the, the primates that are highly targeted and highly sought after to become pets. They're yeah, so beautiful, um, really. They are beautiful. They have golden babies, yeah, yeah, which, yeah. which look really, really yeah. adorable, you know, yeah. so angelic. Mm. Um, but people, so people buy them. You can, uh, it's, it's really terrible because I've seen uh, images on sale on Facebook and Instagram. You can get a monkey for 500 ringgit. You can get a sun bear cub for a thousand ringgit. You can get My eagles. God. You know, yeah. and there was this case, I think it was 2019, uh, where this um, singer kept a sun bear in her condo. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, and, and when she was caught, she was like, oh, I thought it was a dog. You know, I'm like, <sighs> yeah. what dog has yes, yes, claws yeah. like, yeah, you know, man. like yeah. like Freddy Krueger? Yeah, you know? just bullshit. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. a dog. really, oh God, if, if, if Malaysia is now yeah. in the state where we cannot even tell a dog from a bear, we're screwed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, but anyway, yeah. these these going back to these golden uh, monkeys, um, they're they're sought after, and literally, their their parents are killed um to get this pet for you. Now, what people don't realize is that these silver, uh, these dusky leaf monkeys, um, they are actually purely vegetarian, not even vegetarian, they're vegan. They eat leaves. That's why they're called leaf monkeys. They eat okay. tree bark. They eat raw fruits. Their stomach has got four uh four um compartments like a cow because they eat food which is so fibrous that they need four compartments to digest everything and they cannot take sugars they only take very raw fruits mm. you know so as so when they get when people get these uh buy these uh dusky leaf monkeys from the internet oh they're like human babies so we give them baby infant formula <sighs> which is high in sugars you know we give them oranges you know, we give them durian, we give them champadak, oh and God. they die. You know, they die without even reaching first month. You know, so it's it's a tragedy. You know, you you are just doing this for your Instagram feed. Um, they look cute, but they will change color in a couple of months. They won't be the orange baby forever. You know, and what and 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 by the time if they make it to adulthood, which very few do, um, they will not be able to survive in the wild. They don't know how to feed. They don't know how to forage. So you're not being kind to them you're actually killing them where and do you they, take yeah what do you, where do you take this uh, the pictures of these primates so the dusky leaf langurs, yeah they can be found very easily in langkawi in okay. penang even in kuala lumpur you know if you go to the fringes of, mm. of kl city you'll be able to see them you know uh, okay. and unfortunately uh poachers come they 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 have snares they shoot them with glass bullets um, I've been to uh, areas in the forest where I found actually glass pellets. They, you know, so they buy air guns from Lazada. They buy marbles, and they just pop, you know, kill the mother or stun the mother to, to take the baby. It's terrible. So, so this really has to stop. In fact, you know, like my project Moniet, I call it my project Moniet uh, uh, project. Okay. It's called Project Moniet, and I have a presence. Uh, project Moniet has a presence on Facebook and Instagram. Every day, Chunwai, every day, I am getting messages in my inbox. Bang, ada John Moniet. Oh my Bang, god. Berapa harga uh, untuk monyet? Saya nak uh, baby dusky. Ada jual ke? Every day, yeah. Every day. And I'm every day having to try to explain why you're not doing this out of love for them. 
you're mm. sentencing them to death. But of course, a lot of people just want them, you know, and then even though I tell them you, you can be, if you're caught, you can be sent to jail, you can be fined, you can be whipped, you know, and on top of that, you know, this is not something an animal lover would condone yeah. or encourage. Then they're like, ah, tak apa lah, dia, dia comel, saya nak. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, so it's still, uh, it's tough. It's an uphill yeah. climb, but we really need to educate and reach out to, to humans, you know, and to tell them that, you know, some animals are not like cats and dogs. Some animals need to be in the wild. And it's the same thing overseas. Did you know, for example, that there are more tigers in captivity in the United States yes. than there are left in the wild yeah. around the world? Yeah, Tiger King. <laughs> yeah, that's dreadful, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, how did these tigers end up in the States in cages? And, yeah. and not just tigers, but our pangolins, our sun bears, our gibbons. I had a message uh, from my inbox uh, last month from a guy in the, uh, in in, uh, in uh, the United Emirates, oh. Dubai, saying, oh, my, my baby gibbon looks like it's dying. What can I do? I'm like, what's it doing <laughs> in Dubai? You need to surrender it to a zoo. And he's like, oh, but I don't want to surrender it to a zoo. Then I'm like, if you don't surrender to a zoo, then yeah. you, you, you might as well just kill it now because you're, yeah. it's a very painful death. So, yeah. Peter, um, so you take your pictures of the birds simultaneously, I suppose, right? Since we're in the forest. <laughs> so okay. basically, people have been asking me like, why are you taking birds now? I'm like, MCO, tak boleh keluar, tak boleh menentang negeri. So, you know, duduk KL, no monkeys around, <laughs> only burung-burung. And that's been really great as well. Uh, when the first MCO happened, I was like, okay, what can I do? So I, I started flying my drone. <laughs> ah, okay. Take some picture of sunrise, okay, yeah, oh, so pretty. Then I started noticing the birds around my backyard. You know, I was mm. like, oh, what are these small birds that come in? Oh, they're so colorful. They're sunbirds. Oh, I've got woodpeckers outside my house. God, I've got woodpeckers. I never even realized I had woodpeckers in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. and then, you know, when the MCO lifted, then I started walking around my neighborhood, you know, because, yeah. you know, in those days, cannot go far also, right? So, <laughs> and then in the green belt, I discovered a uh, crested serpent eagle. I, I discovered two species of owls uh, in my neighborhood. Ah. It's like, this is incredible. KL City has so much biodiversity. And you know, now MCO 2.0, right? We can't merentas negri. Yeah. So I've been going around to the different green belts and parks in mm. KL City and discovering so many things. Nesting woodpeckers, mm. sunbirds, nesting eagles, so many types of eagles. Um, and KL is so biodiverse. I mean, Malaysia is one of the most biodiverse countries in the world. We are the top 17, you know, up there. I think we're, we're after... Um, USA, China, Brazil, and Indonesia. Then it's us. We are really high up there in terms of richness, you know, in biodiversity, richness in life, but there's so little we actually know. So as a photographer, uh, what are the uh, qualities that you need to capture these uh, primates or birds, okay? Uh, plenty, <laughs> of, plenty of patience, you know, a sharp eye, silence. Is, is there one of those things? Um, I think first and foremost, a love for nature. Mm right um and it's true for any sort of for any art form or anything you any work that you do if you have no love for the work or you have no love for the subject mm -hmm. it's like asking me to become an accountant <laughs> <laughs> it's like i would probably make the worst accountant in the world you know but you i think firstly you need to have a love for your subject and and that is where where it all starts when you love the subject so much and you just want to share that love you know and and that's what i've been encouraging people to do as well um uh, i i received a, a a cute little uh, a message in my Instagram box when I, after one of my bird photos was posted up and, and this lady said, my son, my four-year-old son really loves animals and really loves taking photos. So they've even got hit, gotten him a little baby camera. So mm. he came bird watching with me one day. <laughs> okay. You know, so it's, it's, it's been a really encouraging experience. Um, and I would say to everyone, it's, it's great to just take more notice. Even if you don't want to photograph them, just take more notice of what's around you when you go for your walks. They're, they're everywhere. The woodpeckers, the owls, the eagles, the lizards, the snakes, the bugs. And, and you know, and they are as much Malaysians as we are. Yes. yes. They have as right as much right to the land as we do. So it's, I, you know, it's, I find it very, very disturbing when people go, oh, they're just animals. I'm like, you know, they're not just animals. They're living, breathing things, you know. Um, for those who want to take up photography, I would say, um, start by just exploring exploring is amazing e even though you may have walked around your neighborhood park 20 times a week you know there's always something new that will turn up so just keep exploring how many thousands of pictures have you taken 
too many. I need to like Welcome. clean up my desktop already. <laughs> it's like you have to buang, 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 buang. Uh, yeah, but if you enjoy nature, you always find something that fascinates you. Whether it's a leaf or a flower yep. or, or the night sky or the moon. You know, we've had beautiful moon uh, yep. risings lately, you know, even sunsets rain so many things you know just and nowadays with cameras like your phone camera it can take really chunky photos you know yes. so yeah just go ahead you know and and discover um there's this movement called citizen science mm -hmm. um where which encourages people to just take photographs and upload to, to sites like um iNaturalist and that basically forms a database for scientists to 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 uh you know to to learn where you've spotted these things and at what stage of life they are at mm -hmm. yeah okay peter uh you Make a brief mention of Jane, okay? Of course, this Jane is no ordinary Jane, okay? We're talking about Jane Goodall, the anthropologist, okay? The uh, primate expert. And of course, she's known as the lady with the chimpanzees, okay? How did you uh, got to know her? And I understand that uh, you have a great friendship with her. Tell us more about it. <laughs> well, we started off, you know, stalking her. <laughs> Literally, we were like, okay, let's go to a talk in Taipei. Um, so me and TP, my friend TP, uh, we would like go and stalk her in various places all around the world uh, prior to her visit in Malaysia. Oh, okay. And every time we went to see her and we, we, we literally stalk her for autograph and photo, we say, please UK. come. Yeah, you know, in Taiwan was our first meeting. Taiwan, we say, okay. Yeah, please come to Malaysia and, and give a talk. You know, Malaysians would love to hear from you. And finally, after lots of years, I think it was five or six years of, of uh, you know, invitation, 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 she finally said, okay, you know, here's a date. 2015 like mm -hmm. okay we will make it happen 2015 and that was her first visit to malaysia and she's loved it so much she's come back you know uh, mm -hmm. uh, two more times in 2019 was her third visit mm -hmm. and 2019 we brought her up to experience uh, the royal balloon rainforest mm -hmm. you know and she yeah. absolutely fell in love with it yeah. um so we have so much going for us i remember her i remember telling her one day you know i was like jane um Sometimes you feel very down, right? Because yeah. you, it seems like it's a losing battle with our rainforest trying to save it. Sure, sure. And you know, and she said to us, she's like, you know, you guys, it should be the other way, other way around. You should be really grateful that you still have a rainforest to save. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, she's uh, like, she's the fire under my ass. You know, <laughs> one of her quotes, which I really, really, um, uh, which re really motivates me, is like, the greatest danger to our future. Mm. is apathy our yeah. apathy and malaysians i find are really quite apathetic you know mm. it's like oh you know oh the forest is being wiped out it's someone else's job it's the government's yeah. job to deal with it or it's an ngo's job to deal with it yeah. or it's the media's job to talk about it more oh yeah. i didn't know i didn't know well the buck stops with us you know nowadays with google with the power of yeah. the internet we can find out anything at our fingertips right yeah. so really it's it's up to us to to be more involved as yeah. citizens of the country. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I think the next time when Jane uh, comes to Malaysia, uh, we have to take her to Sabah um, that's to see the orangutans there. It will be amazing. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's definitely on the plan. She's yeah. just so busy. Before COVID, she would be traveling 300 days mm. a year. Yeah. You know, 300 days. And she's like 86 this year. Oh. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> Oh God, you know, just the thought of doing so much traveling already unnerves me, you know, and yeah. she's, even though she's in lockdown in the UK, she's still working every day. She's on a Fantastic. Zoom call or one another, and but she's working Amazing. harder than ever. She's like, you know, yeah. I cannot stop now. So much needs to be done, you know, and, and I'm like, okay, if you need anything from us, Jane, she's like, just keep doing what you do, you know, and she's like, you know, every day you can choose to make a difference. Yes. The only issue is, you know, question is what sort of difference do you want to make? Okay. And to what? I'm like, okay, I, every day. So every day I choose to engage these people who want to buy pets, uh, pet monkeys. And I, and I choose to try to win them over. And, and to me, it's like, if I win over one person, that's one less monkey that's taken from its mum, And that's a win. <laughs> Let's start there. Okay, Peter, um, we cannot talk about, um, we cannot, what do you call it, that we cannot uh, have you on my program without talking about your work. Okay. Uh, your work as the, someone on stage and as an actor and as a singer. Okay, now, um, you have done so many shows, okay? I, I've missed all your shows, okay? Because of the NCO, <laughs> okay? Now, um, so we're going to play some of your videos, okay? Uh, to the viewers tonight. I just want to ask you, so uh, uh, what uh, with the MCO, you know, with this disruption, um, how has uh, the uh, stage shows been put on hold and uh, what's the plans coming up? 
Yeah, so as you know, the MCU has really mm. wiped out, like completely decimated, not just the performing arts, but a mm -hmm. lot of other industries as well. I mean, yeah. the last show I did, uh, last musical theater I did was in Jakarta in 2019 in December. We did Hairspray. Uh, it was the first big production uh, in Indonesia. In English? Uh, oh, in, English. English. Okay. in English. And we had a director flown in from Broadway and it was a really big, big thing. And there were so many plans to, to stage more shows in Singapore, uh, in, in Indonesia in 2020. But of course, we know what happened and what 2020 yeah. looked like. Um, 2021, uh, KL Pack has just opened. Uh, I, yes. I'm, yes, you know, so I'm excited to go back to watch shows there and to support them. And I think, uh, you know, slowly we will, we will get there. You know, mm -hmm. I, I just encourage everyone to support each other. You know, it doesn't matter whether... It's, it's the arts or, or restaurants or small right. businesses. I think now is the time as Malaysians to really be there for one another. I, I can't put it in any other way, you know, just keep reaching out, keep supporting, you know, uh, everyone could do with a helping hand, yes. you know, and yeah. no matter how small you think that help is, it means a lot. So just yeah. keep supporting and keep reaching out and keep, keep being the light that we need. <laughs> yes. Um, thank you very much, uh, Peter, for joining us uh, tonight. Um, definitely that the Malaysians will hear you tonight. Uh, <laughs> your plea to save and protect our animals, okay? And of course, uh, to protect uh, the players on stage, the actors, the people behind the scene, the cameraman, and everybody. Um, I'm sure that... Uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. I can see the light coming now, okay? I can see the light and the spotlight on you soon, okay? Oh. On stage, yes, okay? Uh, thanks, uh, Peter. It's thanks so much, Chun Wai, for having yes. me on board. We're going to do more shows coming up, okay? Yes, and definitely we're going to have a yamcha soon. Yes, yes, sure. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, okay? And, thanks. Uh, um, please follow, like, and share, okay? On Instagram, uh, what do you call it? Peter and Real Chun Wai. Thank you so much. Good night.